West Kowloon Cultural District. I know you are working around the cloud trying to figure out how to make this sustainable financially. Have you figured out a way? Any cultural projects as such has to be financially sustainable. In most places around the world, it is always supported by government or a very rich organization uh, company in the back. So first of all, it is necessary. And secondly, our original plan is that government will give us one lump sum, an endowment, and that we will be able to build all the facilities. And that was in 2008. And all the assumptions were based on well before the Asia financial crisis, so therefore uh, they are very unrealistic. Uh, of course, government then uh, did a midterm revision, but that was before any of the cultural facilities were opened. So now we have opened uh, three facilities, four actually, and also we have operated them for several years. We welcome millions and millions of visitors. They are very, very much welcome and embraced by Hong Kong as well as the world. But at the same time, we re realized those assumptions were wrong also. So now we have a much more realistic uh, forecast mm -hmm. and we have presented it to uh, the board of directors at West K and also to government mm -hmm. because three government uh, officials sit on our board. So they are completely au fait of what's happening. There are media reports, Henry, about the ways that you have figured out or you proposed. Some suggest would there be uh, bonds issued uh, for the funding of the West Kowloon Cultural District or should there be uh, uh, tapping into the use of land in the area uh, to make it a small area commercial and use that money to support the cultural cause? First of all, categorically, we cannot issue a bond because a bond, we have to demonstrate to the investors that we are able to repay the bond. We are not able to repay the bond without government approval of our uh, revised plan. Right. Uh, the same, by the same token, we can go to the banks and borrow, some, borrow a loan and take out a loan to cover the short-term cash flow challenge. But again, we have to demonstrate to the banks that we are able to repay the loan. All the assumptions are premised upon government's approval of our revised plan on better use of our assets. Mm -hmm. The only asset West Kowloon has is of course, of course our team. The team is, I think, one of the best teams in the world. Mm -hmm. Other most important asset is our land. So I have thought about how to make better use of the land mm -hmm. so that it meets the current demand of the market in Hong Kong in order to make the West K Cultural District uh, sustainable for the next decades. Mm -hmm. When you are trying to put these different institutions into operation, when you are trying to bring the best exhi exhibitions from around the world to the museums, uh, when you even try to bring some of the biggest names of the world, but maybe they are being culturally viewed differently. How did you manage to let them all shine? When we curate the exhibitions, especially in the two, uh, two museums, Major, yeah. uh, the contemporary and classical, we are very careful and judicious to curate collections that will appeal to more people and that it's not something that they are able to see easily elsewhere. Mm -hmm. For example, at M Plus mm -hmm. is our contemporary museum that's, that was open, that's been open for nearly three years, yeah. two and a half years. Mm -hmm. We welcome more than five million visitors. Oh my God. And we also put on one major international exhibition by Yayoi Kusama, mm -hmm. the, very Japanese, the very famous Japanese artist. Yes. And this exhibition, curated by Hong Kong, uh, and we have sent it over to Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao mm -hmm. for exhibition uh, for several months, and it was very much welcomed by the European visitors. And now the next stop is we are then going to Portugal for next exhibition in Porto. I see. Uh, so it's the first international exhibitions that we curated 
that we can actually go overseas. This is very much uh, consistent with the Central People's Government mission for us mm -hmm. to be the East-West Cultural Exchange as the 14th five-year plan has asked us to do. How did you try to figure out ways and solutions to something that you didn't have the answer and Hong Kong earlier did not encounter? I recently went to see an Iranian, Iranian exhibition at the, at the Palace Museum here in Beijing. Yeah. It was very impressive because their cultural history is as long as or even longer than, than China. Yeah. So these very rich cultural history, civilizations, really need to be shown to the world and it will help the world understand China. There has been uh, challenges, of course, in economies around the world, uh, here on the mainland as well. While we are facing this transition, how do you see Hong Kong is making um, its way, finding its way right now? We are part of China, mm -hmm. so our relationship is intermingled in many, many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, when China is doing well, we will do very, very well. When China is facing its own challenges, we will face these challenges as well. But we do have one unique strength, mm -hmm. which is we have the one country, two system, meaning we are able to do a number of things that the mainland of China is not able to do. For example, we have a capital system rather than a socialist system. Uh, we have uh, a freely convertible and transferable currency. And thirdly, we have, we, are, we, 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 are, we have common law, which is much more predictable mm. to the commercial world. So therefore, we do have our strength and our challenges is to, to be able to further uh, leverage on those strengths for the benefit of Hong Kong. Business community understand it will not happen as uh, the terminologies uh, indicated, but rather there's going to be changes uh, in supply chains and value chains and the ways of doing business. So uh, you are also a celebrated uh, business person yourself uh, uh, in your career. How do you now with uh, the public service you are doing, looking at all these changes? My main principle and main rule at West Kowloon is that all our exhibitions, shows as such will have to be fair objective and unbiased. Mm. So it is not something that, has, that it's done so easily because first of course the most important one is that we have to be lawful. Uh, nobody has a right or has a privilege of breaching the laws of Hong Kong. Secondly, when we curate anything it has to be curated objectively and uh, fairly and balanced. Mm -hmm. So this is a rule. It's a, fairly, it's a fairly simple rule, but it's a rule that's very, very important that cannot be breached. What about people's confidence for Hong Kong? Hong Kong in the past have faced many challenges many times over. Uh, over the decades, we have thrived under these, uh, under these challenges. Mm -hmm. Every time the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Mm -hmm. And that is the Hong Kong spirit. I like that. Oh, very nice. So having said that, though, we understand the Article 23 just uh, uh, passed at the National People's Congress. Uh, this, of course, is a very important legislation for Hong Kong's future. What is your personal take? This piece of legislation should be effective so that we will not, uh, we will try not, we will not leave any loopholes for the subversive elements to try and, and slip through. So it should be effective. Mm -hmm. And the fourth and the most important point is that it should be forward looking. Crime can be committed in more ways than one now. So therefore, uh, we need to be forward looking so that it will be in the foreseeable future still be a good uh, barrier for any attempt to breach national security in Hong Kong. Therefore, national security is necessary for a stable community, for a safe community. With a safe community, 
we can now all join together as a team to fight for the common prosperity and the livelihoods of Hong Kong. Both here on the mainland and in Hong Kong, there is a discussion about how to tip that uh, very delicate balance between national security and development and growth. Um, now, of course, a lot of emphasis is being put on uh, growth, uh, especially when the economy is being challenged. Uh, what is your take? Without security, there is no stability. Without stability, there is no development. Mm. So uh, I think there's no doubt in my mind that security is most important. With security, there will be stability. And now that we have stability in Hong Kong, our focus will be on economic development, the prosperity of Hong Kong, yeah. and the resources to make the lives of people better. During this year's National People's Congress and also CPPCC, you see people talk a lot on the new quality productive forces. Uh, tell me more about your understanding and how do you see it also might have an impact on Hong Kong's uh, development? Well, the hottest topic to nowadays is of course on artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is based on microelectronics. Yes. I'm in this industry, so I am very much au fait with what is happening in the industry and the demand is very, very large. It takes a lot of work and research and also design in order to make these uh, AI chips. Our nation is working very hard to further enhance and to upgrade our technology and our know-how on how to do this. We have made great developments, but we still have a long way to go. So, like presidents always say, there is no best, there is only better, and we are striving to do that.